Small Intestinal Bacterial Overgrowth or SIBO or it's also been recently um, renamed as SID is something that many dog owners may not have heard of in regards to their dog but you know this bacterial overgrowth can really wreak havoc with your dog's health if left untreated. Now today I want to share with you a little bit more about what SIBO is, how it occurs and what we can do about it. And also for the purposes of today's video, I will be referring to it just as SIBO. So stay tuned to learn more. Pynchon, canine naturopath from Canine Vitality and welcome to my channel Happy Healthy Dogs where it's my passion to help you help your dog live a longer healthy life naturally. Now thank you also for being here today I do appreciate that and if you're new to my channel then please don't forget to subscribe if you feel moved to and click on the little bell to be notified of all my upcoming videos. So by now you might be thinking, um, does my dog have SIBO and what is it? Well, you know, actually it is really a lot more common than you'd think. Now within your dog's digestive system lies their small intestine. And in the upper part of this um, small intestine, it's that part that's responsible for the continuation of food being digested from the stomach. Now as it passes into the small intestine, further breakdown of food occurs and the absorption of nutrients also starts at this point. Now, as part of this, small amounts of bacteria are required to aid in this breakdown process. But you know, if these levels of bacteria increase and become out of control, this can lead to what is known as SIBO. Now, at this point, these high levels of bacteria start to utilize the food that's actually meant for your dog's body um, as their food source, as well as cause damage to the intestinal lining, which in turn can inhibit the absorption of essential nutrients. Now, the end result can be leaky gut syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, and a variety of other health complications if this is not treated. Now, SIBO was first associated mainly with German shepherds where a known trigger was a condition called exocrine pancreatic deficiency or EPI that leads to malabsorption of nutrients. Now EPI is a condition where the pancreas doesn't produce sufficient levels of enzymes to properly break down foods as part of this digestive process. Now in shepherds suffering from EPI, it's believed that around 70% of these dogs also have SIBO. However, today, any breed or any dog can potentially develop SIBO. Now, while the symptoms of this are similar to gut issues like enteritis, where the gut has become inflamed due to some sort of um, <clears throat> excuse me, microbial infection, SIBO tends to lead to chronic and lasting diarrhea as opposed to those short bouts that are associated with an enteritis infection. So why does this occur? Well, secondary SIBO is thought to be caused by poor gut motility or peristalsis. Now, peristalsis is the term that's used to describe the contractions of the intestine as it moves food stuff through the digestive tract. Uh, pancreatitis, parasites, bowel obstructions, multiple rounds of antibiotics and even certain nerve conditions can also slow or inhibit this normal peristaltic movement, slowing everything right down. Now, in addition, if there's too much food stuff in the gut due to poor absorption, things can also become backed up further. And general malnutrition can also lead to poor gut defenses, which can also increase this level of bacterial overgrowth. So this is what often leads to the secondary SIBO, but SIBO can also be idiopathic, meaning the exact cause is unknown and is thought to be hereditary. Now, commonly aside from this chronic diarrhea, um, which can also actually be intermittent flatulence, lethargy or general vitality, weight loss, which can actually be severe, inability to absorb fats properly, and even stunted, stunted growth can occur. Now, some dogs can be extremely hungry and engage in pica, which is the consumption of non-food substances like dirt, as well as start eating stools. 
So what's the best way to treat SIBO? Well, if it is secondary uh, and a secondary issue linked to something like pancreatic insufficiency, then of course this needs to be firstly addressed as well as the SIBO. But for that idiopathic form, the conventional approach is to target this with antibiotics. But you know, from a naturopathic perspective, I rely heavily on herbs that are specifically antibiotic um, and antifungal in nature, including garlic, and berberine containing herbs like barberry. But in addition to this, it's really important to look at the whole picture as always, which means modifying your dog's diet, addressing other gut issues like leaky gut syndrome, and improving absorption, improving gut motility or movement, and addressing other lifestyle factors such as stress and chemical exposure that might be a trigger as well. Now, many dogs can become deficient in specific vitamins and minerals, such as vitamin B12, as well as the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, due to this difficulty in absorbing fats. Now, supplements and herbs can include antibiotic and antifungal herbs, as I mentioned, digestive enzymes, leaky gut healing nutrients like slippery om and glutamine, um, digestive enzymes and foods such as chia seeds, coconut oil, ginger and peppermint, as well as fennel and others that can really encourage the bowel to open and move and to ease that flatulence. Now in regards to diet, it really is essential to avoid all processed foods and grains, anything starchy, and focus on high quality proteins and non-starchy vegetables along with healing fats such as coconut oil. Now in dogs with SIBO, there can also be problems with protein absorption. So making sure that you're offering good quality proteins is essential as part of the diet and where possible you want to make sure that you're feeding free range of organic meats. So guys, you can see in this brief video that while SIBO is not something you might have heard about every day, it actually can really cause problems for dogs and there's linked to a whole range of other things, not only with regards to the gut, but general health issues too. Now, if you've got a dog with a gut issue, any gut issue, and you're having problems with it, feel free to reach out to me. I'll once, as always, I leave my uh, contact details in the description below. Um, and I'd also love to hear about your um, issue, your dog's story, uh, what they're going through and what you've tried in terms of treating it. Guys, I also hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe um, for more videos. And I will look forward to catching up with you in another video very soon. In the meantime, have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.